Good evening, Madonna. Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be with you all this evening to celebrate the launch of the IMB Centre for Superbug Solutions at the University of Queensland. So let me start by introducing myself. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for England and the Senior Independent Medical Advisor to the UK Government. So ministers seek my advice on all issues to do with health. And I also have a duty every year to produce an annual report independent on the state of the nation's health. And in order to fulfil this duty, I've taken an approach of splitting my annual report into two volumes. One which is about surveillance and the other which is much more about advocacy. And my first advocacy volume focused on infections. I actually thought infections were going to be really safe, but that they would take me from the community into the hospital and cover the whole area. And I did not expect at that time to come across an issue that would then become the priority for my time as Chief Medical Officer. Now, as a haematologist, I was well aware of antimicrobial resistance, AMR. And we doctors and nurses and experts have known about that rise of antimicrobial resistance. So it wasn't that I found something new. But what I discovered was that since I stopped seeing patients, the inexorable rise has happened. And that actually, there wasn't much action. And what I set out to do was give this issue and those experts a voice. Not only here in the UK, but actually internationally. And actually the first main recommendation in that annual report published in March 2013 was from me to government that AMR should be put on the government's risk register. And you know, it is that one recommendation that has led us to where we are now. Once something's on the government's risk register, at least in this country, action has to be taken across the whole of government to ensure we're doing everything we can to address this problem. So that means not only the Department of Health, but we all know this is a One Health issue. So the Department for Agriculture and Rural Affairs, DEFRA. This is a global issue. So our aid department, DFID, comes into it. And of course, if we're going to get real action globally, then our foreign office, foreign ministry, is very important too. But it becomes important for the whole of government, and it is a challenge that our Prime Minister has taken up personally. And being on the government's risk register, this is also non-party political. This is for the nation. As a result of all this strong support, and it is amazing how everyone has come together about this, we have now a really strong cross-government strategy for AMR with metrics and reporting, both on those metrics and already this summer, our first One Health report. We've led with Sweden and the Netherlands a strong resolution, a global resolution on AMR at the World Health Assembly last May, meaning that every country has now committed to develop a national action plan. And meetings like this all around the world, discussing what needs to be done to tackle AMR and how to take action, are part of that. Our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Cameron, set up launched an independent review led by Lord Jim O'Neill to look at global solutions to stimulate the R&D pipeline. Because not only is AMR rising, we haven't had any new classes brought to uh, patient use since the late 80s for um, antibiotics. Other things we've done is last year, the Prime Minister relaunched the Longitude Prize 300 years after it was won for finding a way to say where you were on longitude. And the public voted through television for what they wanted as the issue. And I'm delighted to tell you they voted that what we really need most 
as the longitude prize issue, is a rapid diagnostic to solve antimicrobial resistance. So that competition is running now. Our new battle to move forward is to get a whole day at the UN General Assembly in September 2016. We must not rest until we know that our children and their children will have infective antibiotics. This is a global issue. Take Europe. It is calculated that at least 25,000 people every year die of sepsis where the bacteria are resistant to infection. A similar number die in the United States every year. Now in Europe, that's the same number as road traffic accidents, and the cost is dramatic. In Southeast Asia, as you probably know, one child under the age of five dies every five minutes. This is catastrophic. And there are places in Southern Europe where the bone marrow transplant units are regularly closed for deep cleaning because of superbugs, because of antibiotic resistance. Globally, we're seeing a dramatic rise of multi-drug resistant infections. These superbugs everywhere, resistant to standard and even last ditch antimicrobials. And we've got nothing to treat them. Gonorrhea is becoming a clinical problem again. This is very worrying. And you know, antibiotics are less than a century old, they've tr but they've transformed society through improving health. Before antibiotics, 43% of deaths were caused by infections. Now it's about 7%. Interestingly, Alexander Fleming, when he discovered penicillin and then went to collect his Nobel Prize, prophesied that we would suffer from resistance and that this would be a big problem. And then we had the golden age. After penicillin, we had sulfonamides, but we had many other antibiotics. Classes have discovered one after another so that we arrived where we are with modern medicine based on antibiotics. And they have revolutionized life and medicine. Just think what underpins modern medicine. Cancer chemotherapy, not possible without antibiotics. Transplantation would be lost. A lot of routine surgery, including the caesarean section I had many years ago, the hip replacement I expect to have one day, underpinned by antibiotics. But this global age of discovery of antibiotics seemed to finish in 1987. And we have got a market failure. We're not incentivizing the production of new antibiotics. So we face the question, where are we going to be if we don't do something about it in 20, 30, 50 years' time? Are we going to be back with 43% of us dying from infection without modern medicine? A dark ages. And it's difficult because it isn't just one solution. It would be easy if it was. We've got to tackle this through a lot of different measures. And a lot of those are behavioural. We've got to get hand hygiene and basic hygiene and sanitation right. And actually in Australia and the UK, that shouldn't be difficult. But this is a worldwide problem. And it can, as I'm going to show you in a minute, be difficult. We can lose it. We've got to, as I've said before, incentivise the pharmaceutical industry to produce new antibiotics or find different ways of doing this. And actually, the science is really difficult. So it's not just reimbursement, it's also the science that's difficult. I've mentioned rapid diagnostics. Clearly, we can conserve antibiotics if we have rapid diagnostics. We've got to look at global prescribing practices. Our National Institute for Clinical Excellence has just launched guidelines this August about um, prescribing in general practice. And they reckon that 22% of prescriptions could be saved if we've abided by the best guidelines. And what about patient behaviour? Those patients who feel they're validated, they're truly sick if they get an antibiotic when it was a virus infection that won't respond. How do we stop them wanting these wonder drugs 
how do we help them to understand antibiotics are a public good? We've got all of us as doctors to prescribe when clinically relevant, and that's just the human element. Think about the widespread use of antibiotics in agriculture and animal farming, aquaculture fish farming, and how they are abused around the globe. You've got some slides on your seats, and if you look at them, you can see how, through concerted action in England, we've made a difference to infection, to MRSA, Clostridium difficile. We needed, first of all, to refine good hand hygiene in our hospitals and communities and to take action. And if we don't take action, as you can see in those slides, then what we're going to see is the end of modern medicine. I've talked about it, losing cancer treatments, losing surgery. We will start to see people dying from something like a nick from shaving, a cut from gardening. So programmes such as Community for Open Antimicrobial Drug Discovery, which you're engaged in, could well hold the key to antimicrobial drug discovery in the future. This is really important work, and I welcome the role that you're playing in our global fight against AMR. This is truly a global fight, and we all have a role to play. I want to thank you for coming to the event, and I hope you're going to have a really lively panel discussion. I'm so sorry not to be there in person. I wish I were, because I know I would learn lots, and the energy that you put into it is important to me on the global battlefield around AMR. But I've got a question to get you all started. What is Australia doing in the AMR space to fight superbugs? Thank you.